This is the story of how one man's dream became a technological tour de force. How the entrepreneurial spirit of Arthur Parker would ultimately materialize into the global leader in motion and control technologies. In 1917, it begins. Arthur Parker establishes the Parker Appliance Company, along with his partner, Carl Clam. The small machine shop in Cleveland, Ohio, would build pneumatic brake systems for trucks, trains, buses, and a new invention called the airplane. In just over a year, however, Art would find himself devoted to another endeavor, fighting for America in World War I. Back from a harrowing war, Art experiences a devastating setback. While traveling to a trade show where they would demonstrate their brake systems to several large bus and truck manufacturers, a trailer carrying Parker's entire inventory falls off a cliff. Parker declares bankruptcy. In an effort to restart the company, Art files for a patent for a two-piece flared tube fitting. The new fitting, which could be used in thousands of applications, would be the foundation for the new Parker Appliance Company. In 1924, Art reopens the company. With the new company in place, Art begins his lifelong study of the aviation industry with aircraft pioneers. They would depend heavily on Parker controls and valves. Charles Lindbergh makes the first transatlantic flight with Parker's fuel system on board his plane, the Spirit of St. Louis. This historic event marks the beginning of Parker's remarkable relationship with the aerospace industry. Art Parker marries one of his very first employees, Helen Fitzgerald, a progressive and determined woman. In 1929, within two years of their marriage, their son Patrick Parker is born. They would have three additional children, creating a vibrant, loving family. Because of the orders from the aviation industry, Parker survives the Great Depression. Their employees never miss a paycheck. In 1935, to accommodate an ever-growing workforce, Parker buys the former Hupp Automobile Plant, a 450,000 square foot building in Cleveland, Ohio. With 40 patents and sales of $3 million in 1939, Parker is ready for the country's call to arms. During World War II, Parker has only one customer, the U.S. government. It's a testament to the trust in Parker products. To support the war effort, Parker grows from 910 employees in 1940 to 2,600 in 1941. Sales from 1940 to 1945 rise from $3 million to nearly $22 million. On New Year's Day, Art Parker dies suddenly. Against the advice of the board, Helen Parker reinvests the proceeds from her husband's $1 million life insurance policy back into the company. She hires new management, and together they make the visionary decision to diversify. In 1955, Pat Parker begins working full-time for Parker. His experience with fighter planes as a Navy officer in the Korean War will serve him well as a sales correspondent. Parker acquires the Hannafin Company, a leading manufacturer of cylinders and valves. The acquisition allows Parker to supply all of the components of a fluid power system, a key capability to the broader industrial world. For the first time, Parker's stock is traded on the New York Stock Exchange. In just two years, Parker will be part of the prestigious Fortune 500. In 1969, a new era begins as Pat Parker becomes the company president. He will lead the company with the same innovative vision as his father. A mere 42 years after Charles Lindbergh's historic transatlantic flight, Apollo 11 lands on the moon. Once again, Parker Technology is on board. In April of 1970, Parker engineers work around the clock with NASA 
to save the lives of the Apollo 13 astronauts. They devise a way to get oxygen from high pressure storage to the spacecraft cabin, allowing the astronauts to breathe and return home safely. Parker introduces its new logo in 1975. The modern design represents the forward-looking vision of the company. The logo is still in use today. After 10 years of strategic growth, Parker reaches a significant milestone. Sales of $1 billion. It's a promising indicator of things to come. Led by President and CEO Dwayne Collins, Parker commits to global growth through acquisitions and new facilities. Supported by a robust network of independently owned distributors, Parker is now serving customers in 120 nations. After more than 60 years of operation at the former Hupp Automobile Plant, Parker moves its global headquarters to a modern building in Mayfield Heights, Ohio, near Cleveland. Don Washkowitz takes over as president. He charts a new course for the company with his innovative win strategy. In a down economy, the company grows. On July 6th, Pat Parker passes away. With a half a century of leadership, he had an enormous influence on the company. Like his father, he had a passion for innovation and he was intensely committed to customers as partners and friends. In 2007, Parker adopts a new brand strategy, a cohesive program to unify the company worldwide. The plan would include a new tagline to support its promise of partnering with its customers to increase their productivity and profitability. Parker pledges to have a positive impact through their commitment to solving the world's greatest engineering challenges. Marking 100 years, Parker has grown to a global enterprise with approximately 50,000 employees, 400,000 customers, 800,000 products, and annual sales over $11 billion. An astounding achievement for a company that began with only one product and not a single customer. As Parker looks to the future, it sees a world where its products and technologies play an increasingly important role in a developing world. Parker is connecting a century of engineering know-how, technical leadership and application experience with the power of the digital world. Advancements in sensors are allowing greater connections through the Internet of Things. Medical applications and the development of wearable robotics promise to improve the quality of life. Energy efficiency is improving through grid tie battery storage and the use of renewables. And clean drinking water is made possible with the use of advanced filtration technologies. To all the leaders, team members, customers, shareholders and countries, thank you for making Parker possible. We look forward to the next 100 years.